That Chippendale chest of drawers back there, this I gotta finish. This is actually what I call my 12 year chest. <laughs> That's one that Pug Moore used to keep this notebook about when he would build something, he'd say, wow, I really like the proportions of that. He would scribble in this very plain spiral notebook and he would go in the cabinet, he'd get it out. And he showed me one day and I was like, this isn't that impressive, but there were some real jewels in there. And I appreciated as time went on that the proportions that he had chosen were really sweet. So that Chippendale chest came from that scaled notebook that he made. I think this has been going on for 12 years. It's just a real pleasing size. You can get a lot in it, and it's at a nice height to put all your junk on and to get totally cluttered and not find your keys. No, it hasn't, has it? Anyway, I thought, hey, let's build a shaker chest with that same kind of overall proportion and see if it can work. And sure enough, I found a, an example that was built in 1844 in Harvard, Mass. that um, is very close, but it had these funky, really high arched feet that I wanted to tweak a little bit. So that's what I did over here on this drawing. To make a gift perfect, make it personal. Use your imagination. Spend your time. Work your magic. Reap your reward. How can you make your holiday great? Easy. Make your holiday. What I love about Shaker Furniture is the simplicity and the lack of embellishment. So it really comes down to having a strong form. And then they didn't skimp on the joinery either. So it feels, it just feels like honest furniture. It's not all these bells and whistles. It's very right there and it's made to last. And because of that minimalist design, it's timeless. It can look good in any period. So it's a great, it's a great form to teach with too because of that seeming simplicity, but yet the strong um, emphasis on solid joinery throughout. All right, so I love going through this book um, and has a lot of the different pieces made in some of the different villages. And then on this page, you can see some of the typical arrangement of the early chests of drawers. They were very plain. So you had these sides that were panels and then they just add this little filler, filler block on the bottom to look like a foot. But I didn't want that dead straight. I wanted a little more styling. So um, when I saw this one, there, that's nice. But see what I mean about the feet? I mean, I don't know if it's distorted from the photograph, but that's a tall foot for a chest of drawers. But it's funny, when you measure this, it's almost the exact proportions of that chest that I wanted to come close to from Pug's notebook. So then I actually found that chest in this John Shea's book on where he has a lot of measured drawings from some museum classics. So it's gotta be good, right? And inside there is that same chest, this Harvard mass chest made in 1844. And, and thankfully he actually did a measured drawing of it in the back so I could save some time and see what some of those numbers were. So there you go. There's our chest and you can see this base has a crazy number of dovetails. I'm not sure. They were into machining and I thought maybe maybe that was a finger joint but they do mention that they are dovetailed and someone said something about it 
being excessive. <laughs> Maybe the guy was just into it. So I wanted that style. And so now I wanted to get a feeling for what the height and relationship of the different elements should be. So I took those and made this little scale drawing. The dimensions ended up being 40 inches high. I started with that and I'm working to a 3 sixteenths per inch scale for this drawing so it fits nicely on the page. And this is the way I do all my stuff. I just, I prefer to see it in scale and then maybe a mock-up and then a full-size drawing quite often followed by the actual build. So here we've got the, it's 40 inches high and I really like the, it's pleasing proportions. The case itself is 38 and a half wide. So that's gonna give you some nice sized drawers. And with the overlap on the top, it's just under 40 inches wide. Now, the big thing that I thought a lot about was those, that foot. Should I be so bold with this design and go with that high foot? The measured drawings from Shay's book said they were eight inches high. Now that's not the opening under here, but that Chippendale chest, which I like, is five and a quarter high to the bottom of the molding. But what I wasn't sure of is how the relationship would be with that cove, and then I'd have the nice dovetail base, and then this cove is gonna be applied on top. So how is this gonna look? I'm gonna be working with three quarter inch materials for the base, and I want it to sit slightly under the case so that there'd be an edge of that under. So thinking about five eighths of an inch would be exposed of my frame. So with that molding and a little offset here, how's that gonna look? So before I built the mock-up, I actually drew it out to scale and set it on the floor so I could get a look at it. And you know, it wasn't satisfying enough to do that. So I made this little mock-up of the corner with a nice strong cove here. At first I started out with a molding that was inset. So I had a little fillet or an inside cut on the front edge, but it looked too busy. Too much actual detail and shadow line for this chest. This is a mock-up, so it's not really built the same way. We're gonna have a dovetailed foot, which will be under the chest, and then the molding will wrap the chest and be glued to the base. The case itself will be glued to the front and the beginning of the sides, and then it'll be allowed to expand and contract on top of the base, but inside the molding frame. When I looked at this, I got, I kind of like that it's, this measures five and a half to the bottom, and it seems strong when I first looked at it. I was like, eh. I don't know, but when you look at the angle of a corner like this base, if you look at it straight on, it's just like my drawing. But when you look at the angle, the diagonal is magnified. I think it's by like 1.4 or something like that. So it's, you get a much stronger profile from the corner and you're rarely looking at it just dead on. So I thought, you know, that actually does feel like a more full of an offset, even though it's only five eighths of an inch, it works. So now I'm feeling good and I'm ready to get started with the project. Do you still get nervous when you're starting a project? I'm not nervous. I don't get nervous when I start. I'm, I'm more excited, but I love the design phase because all your options are still open. So it's that final commitment to the design is, that's when I'm like, uh, I resist that final commitment sometimes longer than I need to. Uh, that's why making mock-ups is reassuring to me and it helps me to feel that confirmation on this is it. I'm going forward with confidence, but not nervous. I think I'm more excited about it, yeah. Plus if you're doing a historic we related piece like this, there's almost like this connection to this long stream of craftsmanship. And 
you know, you're like connected to the spirit of those people who came before and gave you something to inspire you to, to build something of similar beauty, but you have the option to put your own little fingerprint on it and make it personal and expressive from your own life. This is the only hassle with this. I cleaned up because I knew you were coming. <laughs> but it's never too clean. <laughs> I try to think about something productive. I know I have this.